few machines are as attractive as the Jennings uh, light up machines, like the Jennings Sun Chief and the Jennings Club Chief over here. <clears throat> the machine we're going to talk about today is the Sun Chief. The Sun Chief machine started production around 1949 and they had quite a long run, about 15 years, so they were manufactured into the early 60s. Uh, I think 1964 was the, uh, the last year that they made them. Um, they were extremely popular in Las Vegas. Um, back in the 50s and early 60s, that's when Vegas was really starting the, uh, the boom times. And um, the two machines of choice for the casinos were the Jennings Sun Chief and the Mills High Top. But the Sun Chief were the machines that really started to take over. And in fact, if Bally hadn't come along and introduced the electromechanical machine, which was a, uh, a revolutionary machine and it completely changed how gaming was done as far as slot machines go. Uh, Jennings probably would have taken over the, the lead as far as number of machines made over mills. But the, uh, the Bally machine pretty much uh, did in all the mechanical machines, uh, both Jennings, Mills, Pace, and Watling. The, uh, Jennings made quite a few of these Sun Chief machines. I don't know what the actual production run was, but I'm sure it was in the thousands. Uh, these machines are a favorite among uh, collectors, especially people who are just starting to build their collection, because they are just such an attractive machine. And since they were so popular in Vegas back in the 50s and 60s, uh, people recognize them. The one thing you need to be aware of when you buy a, a Sun Chief, though, is the condition of the plating. Um, these have aluminum castings and they were nickel plated and since they're now approaching you know they're over 50 approaching 60 years old a lot of the uh, the sun sheets out there the plating is pretty bad especially if the machine has seen any type of weather or high humidity so if you're going to buy a sun chief I'd really urge you to take a look at the plating and to have a sun chief replated is not a, uh, a minor undertaking. Uh, there aren't that many platers in the country who know how to plate these aluminum castings with with the nickel plating and make them uh, turn out uh, turn out nice. Another thing to look at is this area right here. Um, when these were in the casinos, you know, people would bring in a roll of nickels or quarters or whatever, and this was just a good target for them to crack it open, crack the nickels open. So you want to look in this area and make sure there's no dings. Uh, also up here uh, was a common area. And uh, obviously if it's all dinged up there, then uh, take that into account when, uh, when you're looking at the price. Jennings, since they made these for so many years, uh, made all sorts of variations. Uh, they made them in penny through dollar denomination. Dollar machines like this one are the most desirable. Um, they're the most unusual machines. And they also made them in the tic-tac-toe variety. And what a tic-tac-toe machine is, is when you got three bars on any kind of a line, whether it was a center line or on a diagonal, it, it would pay off uh, a certain amount of coins. This machine is not the tic-tac-toe model. It's the uh, single line payout. Um, a lot of these Sun Chief machines had what were called hand load jackpots. Casinos liked hand load jackpots because they knew exactly how much the jackpot would pay. And uh, all a hand load means is the machine does not put coins in the machine automatically as you play it. The, uh, the casino worker has to. And the way they would do that is they would just put a key into the bust here. When they take that off, there's a hole here. And then they can just put in as many silver dollars or nickels or quarters, whatever they want, and they knew exactly how much the machine would pay. Now later on, a lot of casinos didn't even do that. They would just stick a card in the middle and said guaranteed jackpot of $50 or $100 or $20. And then when the patron hit a jackpot, they'd call an attendant. The attendant would verify the pay or that the jackpot was hit, pay him in cash, and, and then be done with it. That way the casino didn't have to run and refill jackpots and keep track of machines which hit jackpots and which didn't because obviously if one of these hit the jackpot 
and the jackpot was empty, no one's going to play the machine until the jackpot gets refilled. The guaranteed jackpot card took care of that. But most people who collect antique slot machines prefer the jackpots that are actually there and working and hold the coins and then in the unlikely event someone does hit the jackpot all those coins come rushing out. It's, it's quite a rush. So um, that's pretty much the story of the Sun Chief and um, like I say the, the most important thing to look at when you're getting one of these things is the condition of the of the of the plating of the nickel plating. Um, if you're buying it from someone and the nickel plating is bad and they say oh it's not a big deal to get it replated my recommendation would be tell them to get it replated once it's done then you'll come back and look at the machine. Machines with pristine original plating like this machine or with an incredible uh, replating job like this machine have bring a premium in price and it's a well-deserved premium because you just don't see machines with high quality plating. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll pump it through uh, a few dollars through it. Maybe we'll get lucky and hit a winner. And um, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll then show you uh, pictures of the mechanism uh, from the back of it and then some close-ups. So let's see if we can uh, get lucky. Single Cherry paid three dollars. Didn't pay anything. And all up there. So we'll uh, take a little closer look at the machine now. So here's a picture of the side of the machine. Here's the back door. And then here's the other side. <clears throat> now the thing with these Jennings light ups, there is obviously since it does plug in. There is a cord going into it, and when you, uh, if you're buying a, one of these light ups, you want to make sure the cord's in good shape. It's a good idea actually if it's been replaced. If it hasn't been replaced, that's something that's uh, that's very easy to do, and um, it's not that big of a deal. But there is a cutout right down here, and that is is where the cord comes through, and it's easy when you're taking the putting the door back on to uh, have the doors kind of stomp on top of the cord and it kind of gets chewed up and I've seen bare wire exposed and obviously 120 volts of, uh, of bare copper going in the machine is not a, a safe uh, situation. So that's one thing you want to be aware of when you're uh, pulling the door off and putting it back on. So we'll go ahead and take the back door off and as you can see, the cutout in the door is right there. And if you want to pull the mechanism out, it's, uh, it's very easy to do on Jenny's machines. There's two levers on each side of the cabinet. Just pull them out so they're uh, uh, parallel to the floor. And then the whole mechanism will just slide right out. And then uh, you can get to the mechanism easily if you need to unjam it or do anything like that. And then to uh, replace it, you know, you just push the mechanism back in place, put those two guys up, and you're good to go. So um, here's a close-up of the Sun Chief. That's uh, that's the mechanism. And uh, another important thing to look at are the condition of the plastics. Um, if, uh, if there's burn marks or if they're broken, obviously you need to consider that when you're uh, you're buying the machine. This is the coin return. And this is a very large coin return because this is a dollar machine and it needs to be large enough for silver dollars. If you're looking at a machine that's a dollar machine and this hole is not large enough for a dollar, then it's probably a converted 50 cent machine. Let's see what we can do. 